Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming to the latest episode of Common Ground. And I'm excited to bring our new guest, Philippe Fabre, who is kind of my sort of equivalent in the French speaking world, where he looks at the patterns in history to try to predict the future. And our theories have a lot of similarities. And uh, I'm excited to see where the conversation goes. Thank you so much for coming, Philippe. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So I think. You and I pick up on a couple different historic cycles, and one of them is the comparison between Rome and America, where we both think that America is around 100 BC and entering the period of Caesarism. And did you get that cycle from uh, Spengler or Amory de Riancour? Uh, no, in fact, I discovered uh, Amory de Riancourt uh, very, uh, very late, uh, yeah. and I, I didn't read uh, Spengler uh, until uh, two years ago. Yeah, and uh, and I I, I work on um, historical comparison uh, now for twenty years, so uh, so I I I, really, I think it's an advantage because I. I, I formed my own view of history and history cycle without any influence. Uh, yeah. I, I read the Toynbee late. I read the Spengler late. Yeah. All, all the, the great uh, thinkers. So, uh, so I start really from the beginning of, yeah. the, of this uh, this intellectual uh, travel. What uh, what pattern did you tease out first, and then that led you on to America being the new Rome? Uh, it's it's very interesting. In fact, I um, I uh, I had a, a, la a Latin teacher uh, in, uh, in 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 um, in, uh, in college, and uh, she uh, it was at the at the time of the just before the American invasion of Iraq. Yeah, and uh, there was this uh, conflict between Europe and uh, and United, United States and and particularly France about uh, if or not uh, we uh, West uh, must go to um, to Iraq. And uh, my teacher uh, told us that it was like the the relation between Greeks. And Romans, yeah. Romans thought uh, Greeks were uh, only uh, able to speak, able to 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 make big yes. phrase, but unable to act. Uh, whereas uh, Romans were the the the, the, the men of action, and yes. uh, and 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 this was the same relation as we 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 saw uh, between European and Americans. And I i uh, i read at this time i, I was young i was uh, 19 years old i yeah. read about the comparison that um uh, what's his name um, albert thibaudet uh, a, yeah. a french writer and and um, most um, he was a critic of literature Literature, and he uh, he he fought uh, during the first world war as a, as a french soldier and he wrote a book um, the, uh, in English, it would be uh, the, the campaign with two CDDs, hmm. uh, uh, in which he, he compared uh, what he, he saw, the, the, what he, what appeared to to him uh, was um, a, a, a European civil war, yes. and he, he thought it was the, the, the same thing than the the, Pel uh, the Pelopon yeah, uh, say that man Peloponnesian. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's do you know the author? Fust do you know the ancient city uh, by Fustel de, de Coulanges? Uh, he was, uh, it's a it's a French book written in the nineteenth century, and it's about yes. the the myths and religions of classical civilization and how it established the structure of classical civilization. Um, yes. I think that that book really cracked open like the how classical civilization worked because. Spengler talks about each civilization has its own essence, and it's difficult for us to understand India or China or whatever. Um, and then that book really got me into classical civilization. And for me, do you know David Hackett Fisher? No. Oh, he's a great author. I'd recommend him. Um, David Hackett Fisher, he's one of my favorite history authors. 
Um, he wrote The Great Wave and Albion Seed. And so that was my intro to this where, um, and then David Hackett Fisher, he wrote about these price cycles over European history. And over the course of like 200 years, you'll have wealth and prosperity, then you'll have a major crisis, then you'll have war, and then it restarts. So the French Revolution, the wars of religion, the Black Death. And mm -hmm. so he invented that theory back in the 80s. And his other really good book is Albion Seed, where he talks about which British regional cultures immigrated to America and how that created America's different cultures between the South and the, the Northeast and the Midwest. So he's one of my favorite authors, and I'm trying to get him onto common ground. But um, so I, I started with David Hackett Fisher, and then I went to Peter Turchin. Uh, and then from Peter Turchin, I actually got a comment for Amory de Riacour on my YouTube channel. And now Amory is one of my favorite history writers of all time. And so I've read everything he's read. I've read The Coming Caesars. I've read his books on Asia that I think are brilliant. Um, I've read his books on um, on uh, the American Empire. And Amory has really changed my worldview. And he's the guy that I built the... He's the guy that I built the uh, my theory of Roman America off because mm -hmm. uh, Spengler developed Spengler developed the theory that Amory came from, and then Amory because if you've ever read Spengler, it's impossible. Spengler is like the worst writer in history; it's incomprehensible. And um, and um, so Amory writes Spengler in a form that's actually understandable to human beings. And that's what I really liked about him. Um, but it doesn't really make a good picture of America because America is going to slide into Caesarism. And that's something that as an American, I see every day. I think it's ob if you don't think Caesarism is going to happen, I think, or if you're not worried about Caesarism, I think you're a fool. Um, and mm. yeah, it's sad. So, Philippe Pius, David Hamilton, it's an honor to be with you today. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on this uh, program. Um, I was particularly interested, um, given I, you know, I run a think tank and we focus on America's future. Uh, I was particularly uh, struck by the fact that you uh, came, you saw some of these other authors who agree with you late in life. And that sort of independent thinking, the idea that you were not influenced by them and mm -hmm. yet came to some similar conclusions, I find very interesting and therefore actually much more valid. Uh, that's very valid. Um, and then I'm particularly interested in your not only assessment of history, but you've done quite a bit on predicting the future, the future of all civilizations, particularly the United States and others. And I guess as a general question, I'd be curious as, as to currently right now, are you, would you say you are more positive or more negative? Are you optimistic about the future of Western civilization, America, Europe, et cetera? Or would you say that uh, we are um, teetering uh, on going the wrong direction? Well, it's it's a, a very difficult uh, question to to answer at because um, all depends uh, what period you consider. Uh, if we think about our lifetime, I think it's I would be quite pessimistic particularly for um, America, but also for Europe. Because I think uh, we are uh, entering very soon um, a crisis. Uh, that is, uh, I think, uh, United States will uh, won the great uh, world uh, conflict uh, that has already begun uh, between uh, the West and uh, China and uh, and uh, and Russia. So I think uh, USA will be the great winner as uh, as at the end of uh, of the Second World War. But uh, at this moment, America will be uh face to face with a uh, europe which uh, will be um very um, much more uh, united i think at uh, at um, uh, at the end of the war and a, a russia weakened which europe would like to um to take to uh 
to, to integrate that. into the uh, a sort of 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 big European empire, uh, which is an old uh, an old European dream to to make uh, Europe from the Atlantic to the Ural, the the the, the, the mountains in. Um, uh, it's it's the, the old dream of uh, of Europe and Europeans, uh, and in Europe it's the old dream of empire of the Germans, <laughs> and uh, and it was also the the dream of 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 Napoleon now the, the unification of Europe um, uh, in in uh, in in Russia until Russia. Uh, so I think at the end of the war there will be no other uh, foes for uh, America. No China, no uh, uh, no Russia, not Russia. India will not be at this time uh, a, a new China. It's it's uh, it's beginning to 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 develop, and, and 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 I think India will be the next China, but it is not um, uh, at this time, and it will not be in in few years. Uh, Brazil will not be uh, uh, powerful enough to to be a rival for United States, so it will be only between Europe, the new Europe, and America. And I think we we're gonna see uh, a conflict between Europe and America because America uh, could not accept this European empire; it would be too dangerous. As uh, the Romans uh, come to war with uh, Greeks after the last defeat of Macedonians uh, in uh, the, the middle of the second century the before wars. Christ, uh, what Mithridatic wars? I, so, sorry, the, I didn't... the king of Pontus, Mithridates. It's the Mithridates. Yes, wars, yes. Yeah. no, no. Before that, before that, uh, Mithridates is later. But the the the, the war was that decided uh, Greece would be um, uh, a conquest of of Rome yeah. is with the defeat of uh, Perseus of um, Mac Macedon uh, yeah. in uh, uh, the third Macedonian 100, War, one hundred sixty eight yeah. before Christ. And then, uh, twenty years uh, later, there is a war between uh, Rome and the uh, Achaean League, uh, yeah. which was the, the Greek equivalent of uh, of European Union, in fact, uh, yeah. uh, which needed the um, uh, the protection of Rome. Uh, uh, all the time that uh, Macedon was there as a, a threat to uh, the independence of Greece, but. Uh, Immediately, when uh, Macedon was uh, defeated by Rome, uh, Greeks started to want to be uh, independent and powerful, uh, and uh, and so Rome uh, ordered to uh, Achaean League to let some cities go, uh, Sparta in particular, and uh, and they started started a war, and and at the end of, at the, end of the war, uh, Greeks were uh, completely. Uh, Tamed by the the Roman uh, the Roman might and uh, and uh, and became um, uh, a Roman provin province province yeah mm -hmm. same province. word yes. um, for frame reference for my audience uh, Philippe Philippe and I have the same model of history with the Roman Empire with Caesarism where the Gracchi brothers are Trump and that kind of mar for frame of reference what happens is that America and Rome both become very unequal societies and because they have no enemies they turn in on themselves and so yes. both Trump and the Gracchis promised the old middle classes a place of the a place well the patricians and the aristocrats didn't like that and then in the same way you could say the establishment didn't like Trump or doesn't and the Gracchi brothers were assassinated and it's up to the future whether Trump gets assassinated but um the the parallel between the Achaean League and the European League is European Union is very strong because they're formerly independent societies that were fused together artificially and the Romans didn't want to the Romans wanted the Greeks to be independent in the same way America doesn't want to conquer Europe and turn it into a province but then the in the local struggles inside European politics um, 
means that the Americans are incentivized over time to federalize power in the European Union. But through creating the European Union, it creates a potential rival. Um, who do you see as, I know you um, have Putin's Russia as the next Mithridates in your book. So, uh, in fact, I, I compare uh, just be because of uh, what I, I just said. Yeah. I, I uh, compare uh, Putin much more with uh, Perseus of Macedon. Hmm. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I you're think... right. Russia is Macedonia in your books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so because because the uh, uh, character is not very important, I said this. Uh, yeah. uh, I, it's really useful to help people to. to to understand what we mean, because uh, we, as historians, we we know uh, we know everything, but uh, but people need uh, to make uh, to put a face on on every yeah. uh, every cycle. Uh, so so, I, but uh, the the fact that that Russia is for Europe, what Macedonia was for uh, Greece, is really the, the the fact that that decide which parallel is is yeah, it's hard uh, to. Uh do it because one of the problems I've seen is for those that don't know, Mithridates was a Greek commander from Turkey who launched a rebellion against the Romans that were colonizing um, the Romans that were colonizing Greece. And so the equivalent would be, if you want to look at the historic parallel, the Europeans will launch some kind of rebellion against the American world order. And I've run into this problem too, where like I've said for the different Greek city-states that don't match up the European countries. You can say Britain is Athens, but France is also Athens. Germany is Sparta, but Germany is also Macedonia. And the cycles of history are never clean, and it's never easy. And that's why the world is complicated, and we haven't... Yes. And I, I think precisely this is um, uh, this um, possible confusion of, of um, similar interpretation of, of different periods yeah. is simply the fact that um, all uh, all nation states have the same uh, trajectory from yeah. uh, from birth to death or or to uh, to stabilization, uh, let's say, and. Um, and in Europe, for example, you see that it um, the Western states make uh, um, uh, cross the pass um, earlier than the and more and more you go Eastern, um, more and more uh, they are late. So uh, yeah. uh, England made a, which I, I call a national revolution first uh, in in the seventeenth century. Uh, then it's France uh, at the end of the of the eighteenth century, and uh, Germany made it made uh, at the in the. Uh, uh, the twentieth century yeah. at the end of the of the of the first world war and uh, and um, the 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 fall of the uh, USSR is in fact a national revolution in Russia so uh, so so it's uh, the same cycle and in fact it could uh, continue uh, it's it's only geography that stops stop it yes. because there is no state uh, For the least. further yes why do societies have national revolutions um uh, uh, national revolution is the 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 last the last struggle in the building of a nation state in fact i uh, in my uh, my book uh, it, it will be uh, translated uh, very soon um uh, la structure de l'histoire structure of history i uh, i show that um Every nation, um, in how to say that it's complicated. Well, I know, uh, every nation state is an empire which, um, get hold enough without its um, limits, frontiers yeah. moving. So, when yeah. an empire is stable enough. Uh, during a few centuries uh, with the same frontiers, there is an, uh, an, um, a, a process uh, inside the state with uh, the uh, mixing of the local elites with the imperial elites yes. that make an... Um, mixing. 
uh, yes, a mixing and uh, a uniformization of or yeah. hom homogenization. I yeah. Don't know if, yeah, I think that's a peculiar European process, though, and you can see it in East Asia as well, Japan and China. And I think the nation state exists in certain um, certain cultural contexts, like India is never going to unify, the Middle East it's it's never going to unify, um, and. Well, Middle East, not, but uh, uh, Persia, now Iran, yeah. uh, as uh, as uh, uh, as as the same history, uh, the, the the revolution of nineteen seventy nine was uh, a national revolution. From my point of view, uh, Turkey did in uh, in the nineteen. Uh, with well, uh, yes, yes, yeah. with Atatürk, yes. Um, uh, Morocco, in uh, in a certain way, and Tunisia is uh, is having its national revolution since uh, uh, 2011. Uh, so yeah. I think it's uh, it's not only in uh, in Europe. I I, I think uh, I think also Egypt is is um, is in this phase. Uh, Japan, you said, uh, yeah. China also. I think India, it's a very, very specific, uh, case. I can't read correctly, uh, now because, uh, my rule is India is the exception to every rule. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, I think in its, um, building, uh, India would be, in my opinion, at the stage of, uh, let's say, uh, France under uh, François Ier. Uh, but it has uh, a parliamentary democracy. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the that's the difficulty but maybe it's only an artifact uh from uh british colonization uh maybe yeah. in uh, in a few decades we will see uh, more clearly what is uh, the path of india i'm not sure every society follows the same trajectory because across history transnational empires are the most common form of organization where we nation states are important because the american world order says that, that wants to maintain the nation state but once you remove um that kind of order the stronger countries just conquer neighboring ones and then you see the establishment of transnational empires like the reason very, very interesting uh, do you know uh david cosande no it's a, a swiss uh, writer um he wrote a book named uh i think I don't. Say, I I think it has been translated. It must be the the secret of the West. Yeah. Um, and uh, he has a, a, a concept which is meroporid. So I think uh, you'd say uh, meroporia, but it's it's it's, a, it's a, in, in French it means nothing. I think it's Greek, but I, I never understand really yeah. what. In fact, it's um, it's the fact that. Um, certain um, uh, type of geography um, favors stable frontiers between yes. uh, few nation states, and that's the, the at different scales. It is the geography uh, of uh, Greece in the uh, ancient world, yeah. and of Europe in the modern world, and uh, and that's why. There are, those are the, the two uh, regions in ancient world and modern world where uh, an order of multiple uh, nation states yes. has appeared and no in other uh, areas where the uh, the absence of uh, natural frontiers uh, favors on the like China, China, big China empire. is flat and it's away from the rest of the world. So China is naturally a single empire. Yes, completely. Um, but but uh, yeah. since the 19th century, uh, with the um, uh, the uh, apparition of uh, the British Empire in in India, yeah, and um, and uh, uh, Russian Empire, which was really huge at the, yeah. the, the 19th century, uh, and the rise of Japan, uh, 
suddenly China became a state in the middle of other states, which yeah. was uh, completely new in the history of China. And Good that's point. when China evolved as a nation state, I think. So I think yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's really a matter of, of scale of states and uh, a nation state a nation state can appear only if it has other states of the the same yes. uh, the same dimension. something that one of uh, fabri's ideas that he invented is that different parts of the world repeat similar cycles so the ancient greeks and the modern europeans have a very similar cycle to their history the united states and rome so european societies repeat similar cycles but also arab the arab societies are similar to the ancient jews where middle eastern societies have similar cycles as do the ancient turks and the ancient assyrians so if a certain society is in a certain part of the world it will have a history much more similar to its ancestors in other parts of the world If I might, um, I'm kind of very interested in hearing what you think about sort of the current state in the short term. We've been talking about history. If we look at the near term future versus the longer term future, it would seem that America and Europe would be aligned uh, against, say, China and Russia, that we would have similar interests. But you're, you're, you're postulating, you're hypothesizing that long in the long term, though, you see Europe and America being in conflict or in competition. Right. But in the near term, does it not make sense for America to ally even more strongly with Europe, given the threat of Russia and China as global um, as global empires is uh, wanting to take over? More so China, of course. But the physical threat, the, the kinetic threat right now of, of Russia, you would think America and Europe would be much more aligned, at least in the short term. I think in the in the short term, the 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 unity of the West is uh, is uh, is uh, a necessity. It's necessary, I, I think, of course. And um, I I think what uh, America uh, will do to Europe is to maybe accept few Europe's uh, in the in in the, the after after the war. I mean, uh, America. Tell Europa. Uh, yes, tell uh, Europa. <laughs> uh, uh, I I think um, maybe uh, La uh, Latin Europe, which was the um, the Latin alliance uh, which wanted uh, Napoleon the uh, Third, a Germanic Europe, and maybe a Slavic Europe uh, around yeah. uh, Poland, and 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 that would be uh, that would be something that. Uh, Uh, United States could uh, could accept, but I I think they will not want uh, a, 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 a fully completely united unified, uh, fully united Europe. Uh, I think fully united Europe is a historical necessity in the very long term, as Greece uh, in the end uh, became the Byzantine Empire. In fact, yeah. it was it was a, a big big Greek kingdom. In fact. Uh, and I think it is uh, the, the destiny of Europe when the American empire will uh, will collapse, which is uh, even more distant from us uh, in, in the in the future. So that's a, another thing I want you to touch on. You, we really haven't touched on scale. We've talked about two things. One is sort of a coming war. You um, alluded to a coming war, and I assume that's with China uh, primarily, and and with and we're currently in one with Russia. Uh, but in terms of time scale, you're thinking decades, you're thinking centuries. What kind of time scale? Well, I think the Great War against uh, what I I call the, the bloc, uh, Russia, China, former Iran, Mongol Empire. Uh, I think I think it's uh, it will be it will be over in ten uh, years. Yeah, this is um, your uh, Wars of the Future book. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have your book about this, where um, the Russians and the Chinese team up against the the ocean block versus the land block. Yes. Okay. Um, so so Roger did a very interesting discussion about sort of the future of war. So when yeah. you describe war, a conflict between the West, let's call it, and let's say the East, Russia and China, are you talking about a full-blown kinetic war? You're not talking about World War III. You're talking mostly economic and maybe some proxy 
wars like uh, like you talk about, Roger? Well, I think it it will be it will be uh, tougher than that. Um, I um, I think there will be military confrontation between Russia and uh, NATO. Uh, I think it's. Uh, in fact, if 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 you want to to understand what what I mean, um, it uh, it works as uh, couples of wars. Um, you you take um, uh, the 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 world the, the war of seven years. It's it's how yeah, you call years the, the, uh, seven the years war uh, and the the revolutionary and Napoleonic war. Uh, then you have the first world war and the second world war and i think the world war the coming world war is uh, it's it's um it's it's um, um a comparison it's um a uh, uh, um, um, uh, rapport between c'est une combination de le 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 les guerres mondiales avec les les guerres de cette année Yes, uh, um, uh, so um, a, a, res, a, a ratio, uh, if you want. Uh, um, in other oh. words, in fact, the coming war will be to the Cold War what uh, Second uh, World War was for the First World War and was what Napoleonic Wars were for the uh, Seven Year Wars. You know, it's That's it's. The it's a comparison, so uh, I can't say if there will be very uh, um, uh, a total war between um, between America and Russia, uh, but I think there will be. Uh, it um, Cold War, in fact, was a sort of um, uh, a, a trench wars, a, a trenches wars, uh, but a nu nuclear like, nuclear trenches war. So <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody moves. Uh, we see each other, and uh, yes, and at the end, one of the two uh, collapses, and uh, uh, Germany collapsed in uh, in November uh, 1918, and uh, and uh, and USSR collapsed in uh, in 1991. Um, I think so. The second war is um, a, a war with um, movement, with uh, great, uh, great uh, pieces of land which uh, switch size with, um, and it's not necessarily because troops are moving on. It can be because. Uh, country like the the Cold War. which is size at as at the yes. end of the Cold War, which happened in between uh, 1989 and uh, 1991, yes. uh, there was um, a sort of of uh, dominoes game. Uh, with uh, I think it will uh, it could happen now in uh, in a, uh, a direction and then in the others. And um, so it's not necessarily that uh, Russian tanks will uh, come uh, on, the, on the French frontier, uh, but uh, you can have uh, uh, hybrid warfare uh, in in Germany, in uh, in Poland, in in uh, some countries like that. And, and it, it could be very... Uh, very bloody uh, without... Uh, I, I don't think there will be nuclear war, but I Agreed. think it will be a, a, a real war. So what um, strikes me, though, is we're having a somewhat dispassionate conversation about a limited uh, world or continental war, uh, if you're including America, a, a world war. Um, and we sort of bandy these things about. We have these conversations, right? Um, I have great faith that we have military leaders that are thinking about these things. It's their job. They should be, right? If not, I think they need to sit down with the two of you uh, at length and, and really think about this sort of thing. But I think we can agree that the average American, the average European really doesn't think about these things, nor do they, if they do, do they have any real sense that this is imminent? Yeah. Or like it, right? I, 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 it's yeah. over. Yeah, I, I think there, there will be uh, no more war. 
but precisely it's in the it's in the model you know uh, it's what i call the um the previous war syndrome uh it's like the previous war yes yeah you it has, so uh, now uh, since uh, since the, the uh, the 24th uh, February uh, 2022, uh, we are uh, fighting the previous war, we are fighting the Cold War, and we think we could make uh, Russia collapses uh, with the same strategy we use against uh, USSR, so uh, economic sanctions, and we try to make Ukraine a new Afghanistan for the uh, Putin's yeah. Russia. And I think it is the same mistake that British uh, did when in uh, in um, uh, uh, in eight in eighteen uh, five uh, yes eighteen oh five Napoleonic uh, Wars yes at the yeah. beginning of the they 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 thought uh, we will uh, attract him in Germany as we did with the French during the Seven Years War. Yeah, and he will be uh, completely um, blocked here, and uh, and we will uh, we will um, exhaust uh, French power yes. in Germany. But Napoleon ran uh, just on uh, on Ulm, where he uh, he encircled the uh, Austrian, and then it was Austerlitz, and everybody was completely stunned. And it's the same thing that happened uh, in in 1940. Uh, we uh, French and uh, and British uh, we thought that we uh, we will make the the First World War in better uh, because now we had the Ligne Maginot. Yeah. Uh, so we will make a, a trenches war, but with uh, very uh, much uh, comfortable. Uh, but uh, Germans. Uh, Go through around. the um, 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 Ardennes, Ardennes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and we were encircled in uh, in Dunkirk, and uh, and it was it was over for for France. And I think it's the same danger that existed that exists uh, today. We thought we could uh, we could I mean, defeat of the last Russia. Week. In Ukraine, with uh, by exhausted uh, it, but their military production is uh, rising very quickly. Um, it appears that they get support from Iran. Yes, and it appears that uh, Ukrainian can't uh, break through the uh, defensive lines of uh, of Russia. And now those days. Um, the Baltic states are in the same situation. Ukraine was uh, in uh, in uh, the middle of February uh, next year. Uh, there is a novel exercise in in uh, in uh, in Baltics uh, since the three of August, and I think oh. it uh, it it is. Uh, it is. Uh, it must be over the thirteen. Where well, th there is a uh, exercise in Baltics, a Russian exercise in Baltics uh, from Kaliningrad, uh, and there was there uh, there has been um, an exercise, a military exercise on the ground in uh, in Belarus, uh, yeah. in in the the Rodno region, and it's the same thing you had on the eleventh, twelfth of February. Uh, last year, uh, around Ukraine, but now it's around uh, Baltic states oh. and, in particular, uh, around the uh, Suwalki corridor between sure. Poland and Lithuania. Oh, and yeah, that, that's between uh, um, the Russians have a province in, in old Prussia that's split off, and then Belarus is their puppet state, and there's like a 100 mile gap between Russian Prussia and Belarus. Yes. That's it and, splits the uh, Baltics and, off too from the other parts of NATO. Yes, yes, and 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 and, the point and that he could. Your and, and, here is that this is expanding. Yes, Conflict yes, is expanding. The frontiers are the the fronts are expanding and changing, and therefore going around Ukraine. Why would the Russians, if the Russians aren't winning in Ukraine, why would they start a war with America if America is a so much bigger enemy than Ukraine is? Um, 
it's uh, in the model which I, I, I call the, the revanchist imperialist. Um, you have a good example. Uh, until now, the from all the the, the cases I uh, I uh, identif I identified of of revanchist imperialists, the most the 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 more similar to Russia is Japan in the 1930s. Oh, because uh, if you remember, uh, Japan was um, Japan attacked China in 1937. Yeah, uh, there was another war uh, six years uh, earlier, but but this uh, this is which uh, the, um, the the war by which uh, Japan wanted to conquer all China. Yeah, and this war is very important for the 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 the, the nation which is in uh, in revanchist imperialism because this war can give it the um strategic mass yeah. that make it a country at the same level as the biggest countries in the world japan yeah. was too little uh, compared to uh, United States, compared to uh, British Empire, compared to uh, USSR, and uh, with China, it could be uh, a top uh, yes. a top country. Uh, but the invasion of China was not working very well. There was uh, completely blocked in it, and they thought that the problem was China was supported by. United States and yes. by the British. So you have to understand Japan had the um, national income of Italy, of the Italy of Mussolini. Yeah. It, it was very uh, a small economy. We don't, uh, we, we, we think that it was the, the, the equivalent of Germany in, uh, of Germany the, in, uh, in the Pacific, but it was not. In World War II, Japan declared war on countries that combined had 27 times Japan's population. Yes. And this was the desperation move, right? They felt they had yeah. been ignored after World War I. They didn't have a place at the table. They It was now or never. Yes, that's completely it. It's the, 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 the last war, uh, the, the war of the last hope to become a country on the world podium, in fact. There's Otherwise, they felt they would go into complete decline and they yeah. would become completely irrelevant. Yes, yes. That's that's what uh, but, what scare uh, Putin. It's that they know that uh, Russia's demography is not good, uh, that uh, its uh, economy uh, could never uh, equal one of China, which is the, the, the real uh, regional uh, threat to uh, uh, to Russia, in fact, uh, it is China. Should but they, but Putin thinks the his only hope to uh, be the equal of China uh, in the next century is to conquer Europe. In fact, to dominate Europe, to have the economic mass of Europe as a reinforcement of Russia, barbarian mm. economics. Yes, and uh, in the in the idea of Putin, that was he, he speak every time of multipolarity, is Russia must have Europe, United States can have South America, but China will have Asia. So Russia must have Europe to be on the podium with China and United States, or uh, Russia yeah. is uh, is over. It. Um... I'm reading a book about Russia right now because I want to do a research project of the future of Russia. And so I could see Russia declaring war on America if two things happened. The first if is, is if America in the next election, which is next year, kill me, um, if we have a major internal political problem. And I think that's going to happen if because I would see if next election. Oh, I need to. We need to get about you for you for the future of France. You have a lot of interesting ideas about mm -hmm. the future of France, but I could see like Los Angeles burning down in this next election, or New York City burning down, uh, and lots of problems, and or maybe even California uh, secedes. Bad things will happen in America, and if America has problems, I could see the Russians basically have a dice roll and say we're going to give this a shot and the other thing is that if putin has bad mental health and 
I don't know. I mean, the Russian government doesn't call me up, but I think that if Putin is an older guy and he's getting, he's aging and he thinks to himself, I don't have a son. I'm not passing anything on. Let's just do this for the yolk. For let's just do this to see what happens. And so, a yolo move. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't sure if you'd know yolo in French. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, but I, I think there are other uh, thing to consider. Um, with the war in Ukraine, many people in Russia have convicted themselves that they are at war with NATO. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for a year, they are, have been at war with NATO for a year, and that are not doing so bad. Uh, yes. Because if it's only Ukraine, so it's not not really uh, not That's really a big performance. But if it's against NATO, it's uh, it's a, a good um, uh, a good performance. So uh, they can think that it's now or never to seize. Uh, Suvalki gap and uh, and and force and test the unity of NATO because they uh, they can think yes United States would would protect Baltic states but that if Germany say stop say no no we don't want a direct war with Russia we prefer to negotiate with Russia there are uh, many people in um, in uh, in germany that uh, that think uh, this way uh, because their economy in america is america as well they're just silent uh, is it is really suffering from the from the the, the, the loss of of, um, of russian gas uh, and there is another thing to consider it is that as for uh, for uh, 1940 japan uh, maybe all the components of the Russian state are not in full control of the Kremlin. Yes. And if uh, people from Wagner decide to seize the Suvalki gap, what will happen? America said they will consider that it is Russia which acting. Putin will say no. It's not us. They tried to uh, uh, to, um, uh, to renegade to to, to, to renegade uh, against me uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, it's not. And Germany will say oh, we can and go to war uh, to with uh, Russia because it's not really Russia, and NATO can't uh, engage in a war against Russia if. Uh, one or more of its um, biggest members uh, doesn't want to go to war. And that's another uh, possibility, uh, in particular, uh, since Wagner is in Belarus. Uh, so that's very, uh, very... Uh, uh, concerning? Plausible. Concerning, concerning, yes. So we, sh we should probably wrap up soon, but this is a fascinating conversation. My biggest takeaway is that not enough people think about these things. There are not enough historians in the world who are able to draw parallels. One of the great things about the, his, you know, the historian mind is you see analogies. You see this is like that, and we keep seeing these patterns over and over again. I, I think part of your, the your, your theory or your, your views are substantiated by their supported by the fact that we did see Putin make this move uh, mm -hmm. you know, into Ukraine recently when it appeared that we appeared to be weak. We appeared to be in disarray. We didn't seem to be uh, organized. We had just embarrassed ourselves in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And um, that emboldened, I think. And also we signaled that uh, the Russians are coming. We said the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. But we never said, our president never said, oh, and we'll stop them. Mm, All yeah. he said is, "Oh, look, they're coming," and that seemed mm. to embolden them, right? So, well, th so that's important. In fact, yes, it it emboldens them. But I keep thinking that it was calculated before we appeared weakened before yes. Afghanistan. They've always I, been this, yes. I I wrote uh, uh, a little piece for my blog in uh, in uh, January two thousand and nineteen. 
uh, which was uh, which I call um, towards uh, a Russian invasion of Ukraine, and yeah. I explained that there was two preliminary conditions uh, to this. First was the uh, completion of the uh, bridge oh. of uh, of Kerch uh, to uh, to join the Crimea with uh, with uh, Russian territory and uh send a uh, lot of troops and uh, and mat- and um and vehicles uh in Crimea to attack from the south yeah and the other preliminary condition was to completely seize um uh Belarus uh which was really quite reluctant from uh, uh from um, uh, union with uh, with Russia Lukashenko uh, was playing uh a double game between Europe and between Russia. And I said in this paper that uh, before invading Ukraine, uh, Putin must take over Belarus. He could do that uh, when uh, there was the uh, uh, complicated uh, re-election of uh, Lukashenko in um, August of um, uh, 2020. Uh, and at the end of the year, uh, Belarus was completely in the hand of Russia, and it's not um, it's not surprising if in the spring of uh, 2021 there was the first uh, accumulation of troops and material uh, around Ukraine, because now Russia was able to attack Ukraine from. The north side, the side and not only one side uh as in uh, in 2014 and that was um uh, why at this time putin uh, did not want to invade ukraine ukraine uh he thought it was too dangerous for russian army to uh to come in uh, from just one side but hmm. uh, when he could attack from three sides it was the equivalent of the intervention in uh, Czechoslovakia in 1968, yeah. and that was the the initial plan. In uh, and 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 it failed in uh, in February last year, and that what why what that's what why we saw what we saw. But but you you see that uh, the 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 plan I think was in the head of Putin, at least. In uh, in uh, in uh, in two thousand and, and well, several years, many years. So there's an argument in the United States that because America has continued to add, we, well, NATO has continued to add countries to it, pushing the border against Russia further and further, adding material, men, weapons, etc. That it's in. It was understandable that Russia would object to continuing to add countries, and Ukraine kept saying it wanted to be added as a member of NATO. But your point is this, that while that may be true, the macro, the larger scale issue is that for Russia to be a player, it must take over Europe. Yeah. Yes, completely. And yes. and the expansion so of NATO true. and 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and the expansion of NATO prevented uh, prevented it to to uh, to act like that. And it's the same problem in uh, in in uh, Hitler Germany. Yeah, I just uh, Hitler's that was uh, was thinking that uh, that um, the the british empire uh, prevented germany to be what it deserved to become uh, and um, and uh, and so that, that was exactly the same uh, the same uh, situation situation Project. yes yeah um I also predicted that Russia would invade Ukraine in 2019, and my logic was what we've just described. Um, but before we before we get going, I like you to Philippe. I'd like you to talk out your ideas for why you think France is going to have a revolution in the very near future. Because when we started messaging, that was Philippe's first opinion that all the riots you're hearing in France are the harbingers of the fall of the French Fifth Republic. Yes. Uh, because uh, I, I I told uh, earlier about the, the building of nation states, uh, which are uh, empires that get old 
and uh, and um, uh, sufficiently uh, you, uh, uniformized yes uh, standardized to 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 uh, to have a, a national uh, consciousness uh, collective consciousness and um at this time when this, this uh, stage is uh, is uh, is reached the traditional uh, power the the power of the empire which built the the territory and the nation uh is still the same but but there is a war or uh, a difficulty in politics traditionally uh, in in most of case it's uh, a war uh, a war which uh, must be the um, the beginning of the yes uh, 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 um, uh, consecration uh, comment vous diriez how would you say a conse une oh. consecration uh, une unification ou uh, disunification no, um, um, I, I, I'm fine. Changer the system for uh, no, the the it must be the the war the which the 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 rising nation one of the biggest power in the world. Oh, so that's okay. the thing. Yeah. So uh, France with the Seven Year Wars, for yeah. example, or Germany with the First World War, uh, thought it was about to become the hegemon. Yes, the world, uh, or or an equivalent of the hegemon in, in place, um, but uh, the regime fails, and there are two consequences. One, it is uh, um, it lost its uh, legitimacy in the heart of the people of the nation yeah. because he could not uh, accomplish its mission. Yeah, uh, and it is um, it is uh, ruined. Uh, there is no money, and uh, you can uh, a regime can stay in place if it has no more legitimacy, but uh, money. Must to, have resources. Uh, yes, uh, it can stay in place if it has no more money, but it uh, it still um, uh, its legitimacy because it can uh, appeal to the people to give money to the power like japan but, germany uh china yeah but if it has uh, none of the of the two uh, it collapses and yeah. uh, a new elites want to take power to uh, accomplish the destiny of the nations and that's why during the revolution the new class in power um, is very uh, imperialist. Yes. And uh, that happened uh, during the uh, French Revolution. Uh, the invasion of the neighbors uh, began uh, during during the revolution itself. Yes. Uh, Napoleon uh, co continued this, but he, he was not the, uh, the, the beginner. Um, so... That's what happened during the national revolution, the initial national revolution. Yeah. And when the great conqueror is defeated, the nation lost its ambition to become to become an hegemon. Yes. It accepts its frontiers, in fact, which became a part of its identity. So, and yeah. and so it's no more imperialistic on its neighbors. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, so, so, uh, insects. Uh, so, so, so uh, Roger was asking about where you see France right now, and do you see, well, based on the two conditions that you just described, you must have legitimacy. You know, the the uh, the, the people Money. must have social consciousness, etc., and you must have the resources, um, or or uh, a regime co collapses. Uh, it, it seems that France has resources. People aren't are certainly not starving in France, right? But is has the government or the current um, uh, the nation's psychology has it lost direction or has well, it lost? I I must add only uh, one thing. Um, the the after the national revolution, the uh, result is that uh, the regime became become a, a parliamentary regime, and then it evolved in a democracy. That happen uh, everywhere in uh, in uh, great nation states. 
but France oh, is China's is, gonna do that. Yes, the you described China's gonna have its war of establishing its borders. That's gonna fail. China becomes a democracy. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think I think it, it will happen like that. I think it should have happened in uh, in the 1940s, but uh, but uh, the, the the trajectory of China uh, was hit by the trajectory of uh, of Japan, and the same thing happened, in fact, uh, between Russia and Germany. Germany made their uh, national revolution at the same time in 1917, 1918, yeah. uh, and um, but Hitler attacked. Uh, first, uh, so it was uh, it rebooted. Uh, no, it yes, uh, it uh, yes, it, right word. The 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 USSR, and that's why the Russian uh, Revolution uh, happened again in yes. 1991. And that's the problem in France. The democrat, the um, uh, parliamentary regime in France was destroyed by the invasion of uh, the Nazis in 1914. Yeah, and then it started after the uh, liberation. Uh, the, yeah. the, uh, it started a new national revolution, in which the uh, revanchist imperialist uh, was a soft one, but it was one uh, was uh, Charles de Gaulle. Yeah, and he established a regime that is uh, not parliamentary. He yeah. he hated it. He hated it. He, uh, um, uh, General de Gaulle had a hatred for parliamentarism because he thought it was the reason of the defeat of France in 1940. Yeah. So he, he didn't want it no more. And he reinstated in France a regime which is, uh, in fact, has the same structure than the monarchy. Russian one today. Yeah. And yes. you have a book saying it's a parliamentary monarchy. Yes. And uh, and and uh, and uh, it's what I I called the uh, absolute president, uh, yeah. like the, the absolute monarch. Uh, president in France has all the power, all the power, and we elect a dictator for five ze- years. Yeah. Uh, at the the other election have have no importance, and it's more and more true. In fact, yes. Uh, so so uh, this uh, regime. Uh, is not um, does not fit the the the, the advanced uh, stage yeah. of France in the for France was also was uh, already a nation state before General de Gaulle, so it doesn't fit our uh, stage of uh, of yes. evolution. In fact, because we are at the same stage that uh, all our neighbors. Italy, Spain, uh, Germany, uh, United Kingdom, and they're all our parliamentary regimes. So that's the first problem. Uh, and then uh, there, uh, the regime has lost its legitimacy uh, because of a succession of uh, humiliations. Uh, there were one with the uh, COVID-19 uh, because France, you must understand, France above all is since uh, 1946 uh, is proud of its social security it's yeah. proud of his its uh, healthcare system it's yeah. it is our national proud pride uh, really and we missed beds in hospital we didn't add uh, any masks uh, to protect from covid-19 um, and uh, it was a, a national humiliation. Media's in France yeah. mocked Italy a few weeks before the um, um, uh, the lockdown yeah. uh, because uh, we said uh, what we we saw in uh, in um, in Milan uh, was because Italian was a, a poor people. Uh, they had not the same hospital as, uh, uh, and the, the journalists in France didn't know that Milan is is uh, is uh, is, uh, is richer than uh, most of French regions, but they they don't understand yeah. that. So when we saw we were quite worst than what we saw in Italy, it was a national humiliation. Yeah, and. At the same time, during the uh, Emmanuel Macron's presidency, 
na uh, French national debt ro rose of 600 billions of euros it uh, it go like this and yeah it's, it's like it's, it's exponential a story you've seen all over the world the problems i see in france are problems i see in a lot of countries um we should probably uh cut this short now but thank you so much for coming uh any final statements on your part oh it's the end of the podcast yeah yeah Oh, oh I, I'm sorry. Uh, well, the, the last word is um, uh, contrary to the uh, neighboring country, uh, the fragility of France. It is is its regime. So yeah. uh, other country can be uh, in debt. Uh, very, uh, uh, it's a very big problem. But it France, it's even more problem because of its regime, uh, and it will. I think it will fall. Uh, yeah. There will be a new national Agreed. revolution in France, and that is why why there is more and more troubles in France, and uh, and, uh, and and less and less time between two uh, two phases of uh, of um, of troubles, uh, and the revolution in France will start, I think, a revolution at the European level. Definitely, uh, I because, see the exact same. I see the same thing is going to happen in Britain. It's going to happen in Germany. It's going to happen in Russia. Uh, I think Russia is the first country to have a revolution, if I'm honest. Um, but the stuff you're seeing in France right now, it's it's happening now, and um, which we don't hear about much, by the way, in America. No. We we try not to cover it. American um, news doesn't talk about anything. We talk about the weather. <laughs> well, I I think I think uh, from the the foreign countries uh france is the country where there is trouble and strikes at uh, uh, uh continuously so 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 it's difficult to see that it is quite different now uh it's yeah. evolving well like most people in america and i think a lot of people in the world they want to believe that you and rudyard are both wrong they want to believe i want to believe i'm wrong yeah i want i've always wanted to believe brother is wrong etc uh he's been more positive about america relative to china than i've been but um but uh, having said that um i I'm draft age i have to be yeah um you have to be at your age right at my age hmm. um so i just think it's really important that we eat our vegetables that we face reality that you know gosh we all want to eat dessert and we all don't worry about getting fat but the truth is, this is these are serious issues. These are macro trends, pressures, forces, et cetera, that can't be ignored. And I want to thank you, Philippe, for uh, sharing these ideas because we want other people who are in power, who make policy to hear these things. Rudyard has a very big base of people who watch his shows, et cetera. They're all very smart intellectual people. But we need to get the word out. You're coming on here. We want to bring on people who have influence in, in policy making and the direction of the United States and other countries. And I think leaders like you and Rudyard, if people could hear your thoughts on this and understand these things are coming, they do happen. And there are prescriptions of what one must do if one wants to mitigate them. Maybe you can't stop them, but we need to soften the blow, et cetera, and or postpone these conflicts. And that's, that's what I would end with. Rudyard? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Um, I mean, I actually don't think our message should get to anyone. I believe that what we're saying is of zero importance. But um, I'm ashamed to say this at the beginning, but uh, Philippe has just translated most of his books to English, and they're coming out now. So I'll have the link to that at, at the uh, in the description beneath the video. Check uh, Fabri's books out. They're really cool. They If you like What If Altis, you'll like his kind of stuff a, a lot as well. Thank you. Uh and I'm uh, I'm uh, publishing a, a YouTube channel in English those days, uh, which uh, thanks to IA I I can translate some I, I my uh, of my older uh, uh, videos. So uh, without the book, you can have a good view of what I think about all those uh, problems. And well, we can refer a speaker to your podcast. We'd like to support your new podcast. So congratulations. Thanks. Okay. Peace. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.